Hello, Benjis, and welcome to the <laughs> Binge Worthy Podcast, part of the Geekish Network. Now, the premise of our show is that during the week, we will binge watch a television series. And then we come right here to the Binge Worthy Podcast every Wednesday at 8 o'clock Pacific time to provide you with an in-depth, informative, and always entertaining analysis on that television show. And at the end of the Binge Worthy Podcast, we provide our own unique rating scale based off of our Binge Worthy needs. My name is Johnny Randolph, but you guys can call me Randy. And I've got three exceptional co-hosts with me. And the first person is the chicest geek on this side of the Milky Way. He's Mr. Jet Setter Fresh himself. He's the sorting of just flossing <laughs> on people. Please say hello to the people. What's going on, Chuck? Say hello What's to the people, on? man. What's going on, everybody? I, I am one of the hosts on the show. You only have two hosts today, unfortunately. Now we going to talk about that, man? Okay, okay. My fault. My fault. My fault. What's up, oh, baby? I'm over here What's my up, flow, man. Yeah, man. All right. And this other guy, you man, he needs no reputation. He's internationally known. He's globally respected. I call him the gang spitter. Say hello to the people, Centel. Yo, what's cracking, baby? I love your intros, man. You get me fired up, dog. Yeah, it's almost like, <laughs> let's get ready to rumble. Yo, man, it's that, that same energy, dog. <laughs> it's the same energy, love, man. Let's go. so much. Hey, and as... Chuck pointed out our sister, Miss Courtney Scott Wright. She's mm. absent today on vacation, living her Hot best summer. life. Hot girl Hot. summer. Hot girl summer. That's right. Hot girl summer. <laughs> Hot girl summer. That's what she's doing. That's right. You so, sis, if here. you out there, we miss Hot you. Uh, and your presence is felt. Yes. What's going on, fellas, man? It's the first time we ever did it, all three of us. I know oh, it. Man. I feel good. Oh, I feel yeah. good. Boy, it's about to like go. we about to have a binge worthy oh, bachelor go, party over here. Right, 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 right. So we're if you're out about... there, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Chuck. And we're talking about more man superhero shit. Men more talking man about superhero men shit. shit. Yeah, more men. Unfortunately, more men superhero shit. So if you out there, grab you a glass, and we about mm -hmm. to get into it. All right. The premise of this show is, shh, well. Let me tell you, first, we are talking about Jupiter's Legacy. This is a show that is on Netflix. It premiered, what, a couple of weeks ago? So it was brand new out the gate. The premise of the show is shortly after his father's suicide in 1929, triggered by the events of Black Tuesday, former businessman Sheldon Sampson mm -hmm. travels to the uncharted island in the Atlantic Ocean, where he his brother Walter, and four others receive superpowers. Mm -hmm. He then creates a superhero team called the Union of Justice, and his guiding ideals are never kill anybody and never interfere in political matters. This ideology remains unchanged for nearly a century of his adventures as his superhero alter ego, the Utopian. However, the next generation of superheroes, including his own children, struggle to live up to this rigid idea and his high expectations. So our main cast for this show is was uh, Josh Dumel. Mm -hmm. He is Sheldon Sampson, the utopian. Brandon Daniels as Walter Sampson. His superhero identity is brainwave we've got leslie bibb as grace kelly sampson mm -hmm. lady liberty we've got andrew horton as brandon sampson elena comporis am i am i pronouncing that right you're doing a good job <laughs> okay uh, that's what i got courtney's not here to tell me um i messed it up so <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> chloe sampson then we've got Mike Wade as Fist Smalls and Matt Lantern as George Hutchins. Mm -hmm. All right, that's rounding out our main cast. So we touched on this a little bit earlier, fellas. Now, to me, there seems to be this trend toward 
superhero television shows, you know, mm-hmm. the good guy superheroes, where they are dysfunctional, apathetic, and some of these dudes are downright evil. Now, with this trend, with this trend, we've seen it before, right? I think the boys, the Homelander character specifically. Mm-hmm. We just reviewed it a couple of weeks ago, Invincible with Omni Man, yep. mm-hmm. Jupiter's Legacy. And even you guys talked about it on Geek Beast a couple of weeks ago that DC is even doing a ver- an animated version of the Injustice League. So, like, mm-hmm. these seems to be a trend. And we even had Watchmen on HBO. I forgot about that, which is right. the comic book is the creme de la creme of like troubled superheroes. <laughs> so, Chantel, right. do you think that? this trend is becoming redundant and you're tired of seeing it mm. or do you feel like there's plenty room for additional stories and you're looking forward to more here's the thing i, I haven't i haven't had fatigue yet but i can feel the fatigue coming mm. like if there if there's going to be any more properties that's going to run the same the same path and this the same playbook it, i can feel it getting tiresome really quickly but the thing that's interesting regarding all of those properties that you just talked about, a lot of them were written in time periods that aren't based in this whole concentration of the same th- of the same thematic thing. Invincible was written in early two thousands. Uh, the Boys was was written around the same like another seven eight years ago. Um, two thousand and three was The Boys. Two thousand and six was Invincible. Right. So. And in the time and space that they originally came out with, they, they were groundbreaking. And, and because they were groundbreaking, we're just now catching up to it. And they're, now we're all being like bombarded with all of these things that were groundbreaking back then. But now we're starting to seem kind of monotonous now. So it's it's not a discredit to the original creators because they were doing something and and and, and walking and, and going down a path of storytelling that hadn't really been really touched on in in that way. So they're they're still pioneers. It's just we're just recognizing the art too late, and, and it's just a big concentration of the same thing over and over again. I think I think if they do at least like one more of these type of stories again, I will officially be burned out. Mm. What about you, Chuck? You feel the same way? You got different thoughts? Man, I feel like it's MB, the NBA before 1950, where it's, I'm suffering from white man <laughs> Please fatigue. Please elaborate. <laughs> I'm suffering from white man fatigue, right? When NBA was all white, and they thought they were the greatest writer, the greatest ball players that ever existed in the world. Right? Nobody talks about the NBA the, before 1950. Nobody mm. talks about it. It was like it never existed. Right. Nobody talks yeah. about professional football until it got integrated. It's yeah. like it's like really. Let's be honest. Nobody mm-hmm. really talks about all the great white quarterbacks before 1999. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't know. You got they, Joe they Montana, Terry Bradshaw. You name four of them in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the league where all of them were white because they, <laughs> they were afraid to have black quarterbacks. Well, that's hey, that's a trope that's real. That's still real. I know, real. I know, I know yeah. That's real. yeah. So they, they never I see had where you going, though. And, I, and that's where I'm at with this. Even with the anti-hero or the, the villainous hero stories, mm-hmm. it's always filled with mediocre white men living above <laughs> lives with no personal trauma so they make up trauma for themselves. It's like, yeah. you really ain't got no problems so you just make something up for yourself. Yeah, and that's kind of been my problem with it. You know, it's yeah. just these average kind of dudes and now they get these extraordinary powers and then they just turn like badass it's like, it's or evil. Like it's like, where, 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 where was all that America. energy at before, right? <laughs> 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 you know, like that guy who talk a lot of trash when uh he with his boys, but when he's by himself, you don't hear a peep from him. So. <laughs> No yeah, thing. yeah. Quiet so those stories, yeah. yeah. It's like Captain America was a mediocre person and they superpowered. Yeah. Him, you know? Yeah, yeah, man. And then they yeah. made Anthony Mackie have to work his ass off and be insecure <laughs> <laughs> just to get the shield. But we already talked about that. We, talk we already that. talked about Go that. Go back to show. Oh, but, that. You, but it's true, though. It. It's so real. So. Oh, my God. I'm it's just, so I'm true. Just, I'm just fatigued. It's just. Of, a media uh, white man. Go ahead, go ahead, sit there. No, but 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 like Chuck is saying, it's like every time there's got to be the chosen dude, it's some white dude from America, and I'm like, it's a lot of other places in this on this planet, man, that people a that can be chosen. Right, you know, right. like give me give me a story of the chosen dude that's that's 
in some small tribe in in the Amazon in Brazil, and that dude is the chosen one. You know, some right. some or different. Give me some guy who worked his ass off, or uh, woman. It, it can be a woman too. Yeah, be a you woman know, too. Give me, give me woman some guy or woman who's the badass, like who their whole <laughs> life their parents have pressured them to be the best in school. They have to be athletic. They got to be good looking. They got to do yeah, charity man. work. You know, and like their day is jam packed. Like, give me somebody. Give me one of yeah. those tropes. Like, right. Give, yeah. Give, give, it, me, it, give me the woman that's from uh, uh, Tahiti that spent yeah. her life poor, but she was a super athlete. She could swim for miles. Right. And all of a sudden, she she picked up a stone in the ocean, and it gave her superpowers. Yeah. Right. She got the whole I, weight of the that. world on her shoulder. Her I'm whole tribe. Yeah. yeah. But nope. Instead, they give us a privileged white dude that's already rich. From in the the 1930s, who <laughs> made a bad <laughs> financial situation. <laughs> but we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about that. That's that's the chosen dude. We gonna get we gonna get into that. Chuck, I do want to ask you first. So okay. now, super, if you're going to do a superhero movie or mm-hmm. series, a series, mm-hmm. you've got to commit. you got to build a world. So that means it's visuals and it's costumes and everything like that. Because we saw it in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Like, mm-hmm. it was cinematic. We saw it in WandaVision. It was cinematic. Even as we talked about the boys, the animation style lended to the actual trajectory of the story. Now, I did a little research and found out that Jupiter's Legacy cost $100 million to produce. Mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, Mm -hmm. do you think visually it was effective for the storytelling? Did the visuals Um, draw you in or capture your um, imagination? For me, for me, I'm going to say yes, because it hit on it wasn't going for polish. Like when you look at when you look at what we our current crop of things, the boys to Mm -hmm. marvel to dc everything is finally polished they got perfect armored suits kevlar suits and whatnot and i find it was was a choice that jupiter's legacy made to keep it in normal clothing like like this the uniforms didn't fit Mm. always perfectly they were cloth they were spandex they 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 were normal shoes that were painted up boots. It was like they they customized that with our current materials today. Like you can't literally go out and buy an Iron Man suit, or you can't buy a Batman suit, or you can't buy mm. uh, the Kryptonian suit. Kryptonian suits like looks like finely tuned Kevlar that's alive. And we look at Wonder Woman; she had perfect cloth for everything, perfect spandex. And in the real world, that doesn't exist. It was like it's, mm-hmm. there's a level of polish they added. It's it's a difference getting like if I put it in the musical terms, a studio album versus a concert album, where mm-hmm. the concert album's filled with flaws and air pops and sound and breathing, and then you get the studio album and the producer sat there and the sound engineer perfected it and mixed it down perfectly. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what they gave us. They gave us something that's realistic. Like even in Watchmen, the costumes were perfect. They were. They, they were perfect. They and were. here they were like, nah, we're going to give you what people would naturally wear. Hmm. You know? Sintel, how you feel about that, man? Um, I think they blew the budget on the on the fight with, uh, oh my gosh, what was his name? He said on um, one scene they blew the whole yeah, budget they, and they, just they, finished they, it the whole way through. They, they, blew, they blew the whole budget on what's his name, like Black Bolt or whatever it was. Dude, yeah, that guy like, that yeah, shot gamma rays yeah, out of his chest. The bad guy. When he, when he, when he, when he, yeah, they the they blew the whole the budget. <laughs> Black Star, I think it's Black, Black Star. Black yeah, Star. Yeah, Black Star. Black Star. <laughs> and, and, and they did it early. I, th- I thought they did it at a good time. They did it at a good time to hook you in because mm-hmm. some, some tragic stuff kind of happened as a result of it um it, it kind of like changes the tide and, and so they they knew there was like if we're gonna get if we're gonna get our audience we're gonna get them here at this yeah. moment and then let everything kind of unfold from this moment so they spent the money on that because everything else it's kind of just like stuff you honestly you probably see on cw honestly hey, it's, but it, even it's CW really not really that, a, that uh, nothing to jump up and down about um CW shot cheesy, but the costuming in CW from Star Girl to the Flash looks amazing. They don't okay, look but like see, cheap costumes. And then you said something about the costuming that that kind of hit home to me too, as well. And I think the costume is terrible, but I think it's terrible purposefully. Yeah, I think it's yeah, a I, think, I think it's purpose purposefully bad. It's hokey. It's, it's supposed it's to terrible. look very hokey. And yeah, it's it didn't to convey like, superhero to me at all. And no, I thought it, it was okay. There were some things that I really because, liked. Like, I like the ocean. I like the island. I like those things. But mm-hmm. some of them flying scenes, I was like, they. I can almost see the green skin. It's like <laughs> they just got in front of a green screen. I was like, put your heads out. Yeah. I was like, oh wow. 
I think the visual yeah. effects was there's something that could be done with the visual effects. But yeah. I, I love the costuming in, of this show because it felt like it was normal, natural, like it fit in the world sense. today's world. I and th- even in Invincible, he had a special tailor, right, for the costume, yeah. so it fit yeah. perfectly. But this was more. I never even thought about it from that perspective. Yeah, like the clothing, the, how the house was decorated, the farm. Like these are farm people, guys. Like they're not going to have the most sophisticated. Uh, this most sophisticated tailor, and they're not going to go to the government because remember they don't rely on the government. They they stay well, distant. Go ahead, Sin- government. Okay. Go ahead, Sintel. Sintel, you had something. Go ahead, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, it's um. Th- here's one of the things where I think what why justified some of those decisions that they made is that this this project is not for children. Uh, it's 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 adult themes. It's like the boys. The boys mm-hmm. is not for kids. It's 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 adult themes, and because the adult themes are the 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 main focus, it's like the adult themes are the focus and then the superheroes is like a caveat of that it's like it goes under the umbrella of that so they focus more on the drama the relationships that's being built the why behind the the gray areas of good and evil and all of that and the costumes were if you if you were marketing this to to little kids you would need those marvel type costumes you would need those dc type costumes because that's what kids in in tweens and teenagers and and people kids i I call folks in their early 20s kids kids and that you know that's what they're looking for is that the flash and all of that 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 kind of stuff the pizzazz whereas this older audience is really a little bit more driven towards the why behind why they're mm-hmm. making the choices that they're making and they focused it on that so that's why i think they blew the budget so quick they blew it to, to get you hooked in and even get mm-hmm. some of the little mm-hmm. some of the younger people to 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 buy in and then they like really just force a lot of story on you yeah. and and i think like a lot of the criticism that it gets is that it's, is that it's slow. I've heard that's the main thing I've heard. A lot of people that they don't like it is because it's just way too slow for a superhero hero movie. But it's because it's talking to that golden age comic generation. Like if you're like 40 and up and above or 35 and above, um, you're what what moves you is a little bit different now than just the flash of of what it means to be a superhero movie. And, and they're catering to to those types of individuals. See, that's why I love talking to these guys. Like, they're making mm-hmm. me rethink of what how I was perceiving it. Because now I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, uh, the Utopian, he's got gray hair and a beard and everything. But yeah. what, are you, what you guys are saying is like, they're making it real, right? Everything is not going to be perfect and into play. So it made me think about, re, re, reevaluate how I thought about the costume and everything. Okay, so let, let's talk about the story. The Utopian, uh, Sheldon Sampson, he's our protagonist. And as we yes. said, he's kind of a <sighs> average white guy, a scion of Mediocre. wealth and privilege, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he, he gets these superpowers. And we'll talk about later more of the backstory, but mm-hmm. <sighs> he makes a lot of bad decisions. He does make a lot he, of bad decisions. He he tells his father to expand when Walt, his brother, is like, no, this is not the right time. And one of the things that we see throughout the series is this theme of don't kill, regardless of anything. Don't kill. Yes. So my question is, and I'll push it to you, Chuck. Is he right in this theme that he has or is he just kind of being naive and not seeing the world as it really is now i mean has he ever saw the world as it really is Mm. he's lived (laughs) in the privileged life his whole entire Mm. life he's never lived in the streets in the 20s and 30s people were struggling and starving then right you know and he didn't have that you know yeah his his father jumped off a building that he owned People care to forget that he owned the building because he made some bad decisions based on his son. Facts. And the, oh, the oh, other yeah. brother, his Facts. older brother, was the was was the smart one, and he hmm. got by as being mediocre as all out because he was charming and handsome. Um, yeah, and even his friend George, I mean, like he attracted those type of people. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. George yes. is very loyal, so and George annoying. was brilliant too. George, George is not an idiot. And I think a lot of it has to do with him never being based in reality. He's based in his reality, you know, and that's not the norm. That's not. And that's kind of what they did during that period. Like Mm -hmm. even 
and the same with George and Sean George and even with Sheldon walking into the plant, there's like, nothing's wrong. Keep your head up high. Positive thoughts. Like no matter what was going on around them, they still had this same, this similar yeah, affirm, affirm, uh, mentality. So, uh, Trey, uh, how do you feel about it? You know, was he right? Uh, was he wrong? Kind of similar to Chuck. How do you feel about that? Well, about the whole do not kill thing when you live that kind of life and you've never really had to like fight to survive um it's, it's it's easy to take that standpoint i'm not i'm not sitting here justifying murder let me let me be clear but when you're when you come from a position where you have to literally like put your body on the line in order to move forward if you if you grew up in in, in the hood or in the ghetto or in the 20s during sitting in bread lines and you're fighting for position because you're trying to de determine if your kids are going to eat because the dust bowl has absolutely ravaged right. everything around you know you that that whole mentality of well I'm not going to kill or do what I need in order to fix this solution that just doesn't sit well with, with, with the reality of the rest of the world. You mm -hmm. know, even though his family kind of went broke, broke per se, they still had connections, they still had access. Like he right. got stranded in the middle of nowhere and made a phone call and everything was okay. Right. Yeah. You know, there's right. nobody. And meanwhile, he's looking across the street and there's a bread line where nobody has that type of access. So it's easy to be, to take this high and mighty righteous standpoint. And yeah. When you've never had to, to like mention, really put your fingers in the dirt and 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 scratch and claw for for your survival. Can, can I say something? Yeah. And also, I think it's a noble effort not to kill. Here it is. I am definitely way more privileged than everybody on the planet. And if we start this path to killing villains and normal humans, nobody's watching us and nobody can stop us. As Utopia, nobody can stop you. Right. You know. I and get some that. of it, but. We do have to make right, or do we have to make some exceptions? I mean, because I mean, his when he thing... was fighting Black Star, Black Star, mm. and that was a clone who's not even at the height <laughs> of what the real Black Star is. Yes, yeah. he was about to kill both uh, his mother and mm -hmm. his father. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Paragon, uh, he had to make a snap decision, uh, and I, he had I to don't... take that guy out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, he had yeah. to, and had he not been and there, he and killed, even the mother bought it. He up. killed two yeah. of Paragon's friends too. Yeah. Right, he killed two of Paragon's friends, and he yes. was going to kill his mother and For father. Anybody watching the spoilers, we got we it's, just it's mad spoilers oh, yeah, alert. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, our yeah, this, this our, our, our Benji that. should know that. Our yeah, Benji yeah, should yeah, know Benji we put out Benji mad spoiler yeah, alert. Yeah. But yeah, he uh, but he and then he criticized them without even without even thinking about because I think he does not react. Willing to die for his belief. And is he? I think because he is willing to die for it. I think he's willing to die for it. But Paragon's not willing to let somebody die for his father's beliefs, and that's fair. Well, what there's a scene in the prison where where Par where Utopian mm. is tested, and he's like his son. His son is on the line, and and he makes a decision that ends up working out in his favor. Then his son looks at him and was like. You're going to let me die. It took you a long time to make that damn decision. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't him that made the decision. Yeah. Something happened well, I, that caused the decision. Well, the only thing I was saying was because at the end of that little scene, he said, son, I wouldn't have let you die. And I'm like, it took you a long time to come to that conclusion. And I'm like, if you want to go let me die. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. And when he was, uh, and because I would have lit him up. Like, you put your hands on mine. It, it's over, son. Them yeah. eyes is lighting up and them beans is out. But remember when he was talking to to that psychiatrist and uh, who was a former villain, he yeah. said, "You want to adhere to mm -hmm. this code right. because it keeps you in power and makes you feel good, yes. right? And it's your legacy, so people remember it's you your legacy. Gone. Yeah, you like, haven't gone. thought this all the way through. Yeah, yeah. like, but like, that's, like, does mm -hmm. does that does that code hold up if the chosen one was a uh, was a Haitian slave at the, at, the, at the beginning of the revolution, of the Haitian revolution. Does that code hold up? No, no. that code doesn't exist because that of person. Course, of course it doesn't hold up yeah. because this man, because that man has been in bondage his entire life mm -hmm. and he knows and he knows and can see the people that are holding him in bondage and there yeah. is no negotiating. So that, that's what I'm saying. So he comes from a place where it's easy to make that decision. You're like, well, I, I absolutely wouldn't do that. But, but you give that privilege to that, somebody else, right. it changes. And when he does that, you have to remember, he's the most powerful being in the world. Even right, his yeah. crew have powers. Innocent right. people don't. 
And they yes. are the ones that are being exploited by this yeah. super villain. And so when you take that hard stance, when somebody who's willing to kill and take out everybody, mm-hmm. when you make that hard stance, you're putting other people's that lives can't defend in danger. Themselves. Yes. Right. Yes. And we saw that later on. Mm-hmm. Yes, we did. Which one of the superheroes, what was, and I can't forget, I can't remember her name. She gets killed when they could have stopped him in a previous scene. Oh, was yeah. Petra, I think that was her name or something like that. Something like that. I think, what were you talking about? Yeah, yeah. the young lady that died when, when his yeah. wife right. came to stop him. Right. And she yeah. did. She's I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. And she died. And look what she happened. She dies. And look what happened. Right. Yeah. So you got to figure, mm, some bad decisions. So yeah. everybody seems to be going along with uh, Utopian's uh, ideas and thoughts. But one person that isn't is his daughter. And she comes through <laughs> the first dinner drunk as hell. So she lights it on fire. How do you guys feel about Chloe and, and, and her story? Um, I, personally, I like Chloe. At first, I didn't. I was like, this privileged girl, but I understand where she comes from. My dad expects me to be perfect. This world is fucked up. And, and she was a model. Like, like imagine imagine how, you, how many Harvey Weinstein she ran in, had to get them, put them hands on. Well, they knew she was a superhero. They, so they probably don't mean yeah. they ain't gonna try it. Don't mean they ain't gonna but try yo, but, it. But yo, but but she but she flexed at the car commercial. Like the which, car commercial. Which, That's what made me Which think really leveled the playing field. It's like I ain't the one, you know, yeah, you can I, I think, I think you can do that, all that other stuff. I, I ain't that person. <laughs> you should get your dad and put the car over your head. Yeah. And I think it can't that's that that it come to a point where she had to do that. But imagine people are not going people are going to attempt. Living in Hollyweird and Hollywood, yeah. those are two different places. People are gonna make those attempts at her. And I bet you yep. she just realized it. Nobody's gonna pick with Yot- Utopian. Nobody's gonna pick with his wife Grace, right? I think it's her name, right? His wife Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh Lady what is it? Her, her real name's Grace though, I think. It's Grace is Grace Kelly yeah. Sampson. Yeah, nobody's gonna mess with Grace or Utopian. But the daughter People are going to tempt her, and she's a model, and she's celebrity. You know, the son would rather be on the farm tilling the farm, yeah. and she wasn't about that life. She was about I'm a celebrity. I'm out here doing drugs. I'm having a good time. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, fuck Chloe. That's her name. <laughs> fuck Chloe. I like she over here. Right, good she good she over here standing on this righteous, on her righteous pulpit about this, then the third, and and you you go to a profession where somebody's opinion of you is what matters based on how you draped yourself on a car. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. And then you spend the rest of your evening snorting snorting alien drugs, and I'm supposed to feel some kind of way about you, bitch. Kiss my ass. Fuck okay. out of here, Chloe. I had I like complicated Chloe. feelings with her, but like her conversation with her father when he came first came, I was like. The utopian is a dick. He did not try to listen to anybody exactly. or her at all. Oh, so growing up with that story. guy, yeah. growing up with that mm-hmm. guy, it's yeah. like this dude is terrible. He drove yeah. him away. He drove uh, away. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not saying that her environment didn't push her to make those decisions that 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 she made. But am I supposed to feel sorry for her? No. I'm supposed like to think that. She sees the big picture when everybody else doesn't. Uh, no, no, I'm not about to anoint her as some un, some misunderstood uh, person. Fuck that. Fuck that. You and, are and what you are. She all that shit up, boy. She didn't know where it came from. Yeah. You don't even know what it is. And you put it in your nose and you and you snort the whole bag. She gave, she gave and, no and How fuck. the hell are you supposed no to be? Fuck. She gave none. Yeah. None. She, 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 she was at the point none. where she was, she was in that stage of depression where it didn't matter. Yo, though. Listen. You die once. Let's go hard. But I'll say this about Chloe's character. Like, I don't like her, which gives her an opportunity for redemption. And she, I don't know. I don't know if she's going to take it. I don't know. Uh, no, I but, don't want her to redeem but, herself. But I, I, I want. I, I love character arcs. I want to see people grow and learn from their mistakes. And right now, she's at the bottom, and I, I don't see her like her. Worse, become a villain with her uncle. And that could be interesting too. That could that could really be interesting if she Since, decided to right, turn. I wasn't gonna go and there, and but this early. But all right, we gotta talk about brainwave. We gotta talk yeah. about brainwave. Uh Sheldon's older brother, uh mm-hmm. Walter. Okay, mm-hmm. he inherits the ability to kind of control my you know something they did a lot of backstory about. They did a lot of backstory in this uh right. in this series, but they never touched on what gave each superhero their powers. Like, why did they inherit the powers that they got? And I okay, thought it was I all that. 
with all that backstory, which kind of bothered me a little bit, but mm-hmm. all that backstory when they were in the when they were on the island in the mountain and they get anointed with all these powers, mm-hmm. they never say, OK, this is why you have this ability. This is why you have that ability. That yeah, kinda, I don't know. that kind of that bothered me. Maybe that bit. goes into season two and they, they go in deeper and where their abilities came because they just hopped right back. They come back off the island and they're right back. They're superheroes yeah. at the time. Jesus. Yeah, they, 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 they didn't all really- that backstory. Yeah, and they didn't really define what those powers were completely nope. because we we mm-hmm. know the utopian is dope and we know he can do a lot of things, but it's just they just throw stuff at him and we just have to kind of like they throw mm-hmm. stuff at us at the audience and we just kind of have to just accept yeah, they don't that explain he, their can, powers. he can do that. But, like, like, oh, you no got super test. hearing. Don't. Oh, okay. All right. He's got super hearing now. He's got super sight. Oh, OK. Well, he just flew to Mars. So obviously he doesn't need I, to breathe I oxygen. So, <laughs> OK. Okay, I'll just I'll just roll with that. They didn't really explain anybody. I love anybody's full that. full powers. I love all that because I get tired of the exposition po- uh, superpower explaining. Like right. we have to see Clark Kent do all the things Superman does, and then we know he does them. Then he goes do them. I would love to see Superman discover some of his powers as he's battling somebody or as he's doing something. Like he's focused on concentrating. I guess the I'm fine with that, but like. Half this series was done though in backstory. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, it was. It's, it's it was their history of backstory, how they it is, but it's still backstories. And then it jumps from when they got right, their but, powers to where we are today. That's so, I, to I'd me, agree with you, Johnny. I say like half of it is is in the past. Mm-hmm. Half of the yeah, story. And is if you're past. gonna do all that, like give me, give me how I thought it was too much backstory personally. I really did. I thought they spent too much time and on the damn boat. I thought they could have had maybe like one episode of backstory. Yeah, they spent too much time with it all. And we really only got to see everything through the perspective of Sheldon. I think that's, that's, all, the, I think that's every- the purpose. Cause because what we what, much what we have learned is Sheldon's hold on reality is not strong. And it's not the most he's not he's not a legitimate legitimate storyteller. He's okay. not he's not he's he's not a legitimate narrator. Well, there was a there was an interesting scene when he's talking to his psychiatrist mm-hmm. and um and what's interesting is that you see it from the perspective of somebody that he has to catch. He's a villain. You you the reveal mm-hmm. ends up being a psychiatrist is like one of his greatest one of his greatest yes. his, and it allows him it allows us the audience to get a deeper look into who Sheldon is because everything else, like you said, is seen from Sheldon's perspective and then a little bit from, from Brainwave's perspective. But it wasn't really until then when his nemesis like calls him on his shit. And right. Like, and he you know, does. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like completely. Um, I thought, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting because you do, he, he, Sheldon, Sheldon is the star of, of the show and what you see is the unshakable truth to, to the audience. And we just get snippets from, from everybody else that, stray from that um so it's a little bit of sheldon exhaustion i guess maybe maybe all yeah. of us are kind of kind of sick of seeing him a little bit in his yeah. idealistic viewpoints and all of that like 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 it hints on why sky fox had the little the little toy the little thing but it never tells why he got it nobody else got anything special why he got an actual artifact and nobody else got it from Jupiter. I would have liked But that it. wasn't sky foxes it was a, some other random dude that we didn't see no it was sky fox they had I the toy. Sky Fox uh-huh. and then it so went Sky to Fox, his son. Sky Fox made he made a toy that went to his son, but that other no. guy that came off the uh, the island, he had something else. I thought no, that that was Sky Fox, the guy that came out the island. Was that it was the same? Toy. Yeah, because yeah. remember he beat him to the okay. sk- yeah. Because the black guy had to super speed and he tried to get to the chair, but a Sky Fox beat him by transport. Tra- transport. Okay. I remember. With the, with the yeah, I, re- I remember that. I, yeah, I thought at first passed- I was I was upset. I was like, why do the kids inherit the powers of their their parents? But it makes total sense. No, it makes sense. It, it makes total DNA. sense. I would, yeah, it was in there. But so it we, makes we, sense we, that that both uh, Paragon and Chloe, what's Perry Brandon, Brandon and Chloe, Brandon, have Brandon a is a mixture there. of their parents' powers. Well, well, Brandon is supposed to be the next Utopian. Uh, Omni Man, not Omni Man, Utopian. Utopian. Yes. So I guess his powers are still blooming. He's still but coming see, into his powers. I thought though that Chloe seemed a lot stronger. She does than seem Brandy. a lot stronger. She seems more advanced than he is, she and is. they're still waiting for Brandon to grow into his powers. What is he about? 22, 23? Yeah, he's got. Is he yeah. older or younger than her? Older because is he, he older because the, the flashback of um, no, he 
he's the younger brother, I thought, because in the flashback when they were children and she she kind of like flexes her power a little bit and then gets lectured by her dad. She was the youngest. OK, I see, I, I could never tell the difference Dang, between think, who was, the, was the, youngest the youngest. And I never thought that they actually said who was the oldest or not. Yeah, I don't recall that or it didn't stick out to me. So maybe we, like we they don't like they don't talk about how Fitz lost his ability to walk. He's the fast one. He lost his ability to walk. No, they don't. They don't yeah, they don't talk. They about haven't that gotten to that yet. So, no. yeah. and that's the build up if they have. A and I, you know what I'm tired of? Them crippling the black person. Damn. <laughs> I'm tired of them. And then Can they make the honest? daughter unsecure the same way they tried to do with Falcon. <laughs> it's like, oh, we get these powers. But uh, she was like, the I'm black out. people. She, she didn't believe in it no more. Which yeah. is she didn't believe that she should be doing it or she was worthy of doing it. Then mm -hmm. she didn't believe in the code. But like, why are she saying like, I'm not worthy or I can't do it anymore? And, yeah. I, 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 and then they cripple, the they cripple, fit, they cripple fits as well. And then the white people mm -hmm. have to convince them that, no, <laughs> you're still valuable. No, this code is still right. I I, I had some problems that with that. One. <laughs> that code. <laughs> that part. I, yeah, I, I, I agree with them, with the, some of the, the younger generation. It's like, yo, they are hunting us and we are dying. I need you. Yeah. I need to it, defend it, myself, bro. They don't explain <laughs> Where did all these villains come from? Yeah, right. they, don't, they don't really explain so, right, so, so that's something we haven't talked about neither. And I'm excited yeah. about that. I'm glad they haven't told us everything. I'm glad they told us very little. Because well, because because we just season one was into this definitely world and there's no exposition. it was definitely a setup right mm -hmm. and we didn't really even have a big bad in season in season one it's supposed well, to be black, black star, star was like brainwave the... we're seeing he's kind of controlling things yeah but, but we thought we didn't know he was the bad black star no black star was a kind of a crony of brain of uh, a brainwave yeah he was yeah so we don't re no. we don't really have a big bad in there and Everybody i like well, well, well they mentioned they mentioned um sheldon's best friend and how he turned sky on fox. the team they all sky, fox. sky fox they mentioned that sky fox turned on the team and it was like the biggest betrayal so if from based on what we've seen so far in season one he's kind of the guy in the shadow that's been talked about but nobody we mm -hmm. haven't met him we haven't seen what he can do and we know that his kid exists and we know that his kid is planning something yeah, but when they were having, when uh, Utopian and his son were having a conversation, they said he turned on us. And the son says, my mother says it was just the opposite. It's, it's you guys turned on him. Right. And his perspective. Yes. And we never really got what mm -hmm. really happened. <laughs> yeah. And we know for we a fact, know. Brainwave, Brainwave had a fight with him and was setting him up. We know that for a fact. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Cause brainwave, yeah. hate, cause brainwave hated him. He's always yeah. Brainwave always hated George. Brainwave, hated. but brainwave had some ideas. He was kind of he was right. Like he was kind of with the younger generation, and I'm surprised there wasn't uh like a coup or like a split between the the union between the members. One going with brainwave and one going with Utopia, because right. brainwave had that idea that those ideas just aren't living up. To he, what they need to. I think I think he was hiding behind his 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 brother, like he may be the reason behind all of this. Who like, brainwave? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Go ahead, I Cynthia. mean, I was gonna say, well, well, we do get a chance to look into into the brother's backstory, and brainwave was the only one who kind of like took the business seriously. He's the only one, based off of what he says, that really knew his father, like really knew mm -hmm. him, because he had to do the books and he had mm -hmm. to do do the real business decisions, whereas Sheldon could just, you know, live in this fantasy world of just being the rich kid's son. Um, and even still, he kind of hints to the fact that even with that, even with Brainwave doing all of the work, Sheldon was still kind of chosen as the favorite, right? You know, yeah. you kind of you, you feel that. Um, you don't develop that type of backstory and then all of a sudden all that shit just gets resolved. You know, that's just, that just doesn't happen in storytelling. That has to be resolved in a whole other different kind of way. And this is a superhero movie. So it's going to be resolved in some conflict. Yeah. And Believe everything that. he said was right. Like yeah. Brainwave has not made him, he's not made a mistake in anything he said. Nah. Nah, I mean, he called it. He was like, yo, I can save the company. Nah, Sheldon wants to go off and be the superhero and make dumb rash decisions. Right. Because even so. when, after they had, uh, after they had, we're in financial trouble. They mm -hmm. were talking to us, you know, some government people and some bankers. And they said, 
uh, I just need you to show up because like you're the face and you're yeah. I can take care of all the business, but they want to see the face. And Sheldon show didn't show up. up and the company failed. He's yeah, like, that's man. all I asked you to do was to show up. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think the most telling scene was uh, when he was talking about his dad's tide when he was in the coffin, when, when, they were, when they were preparing his body. And, and Brainwave was like, yo, that's that he hated that tie. You know, he only wore right. it because he liked you. Mm. You know, I know what he really likes. He really likes this. And, you know, I guess they're yeah. going to set that up. That, that tells you everything you need to know about that family in, in just that in that mm-hmm. particular moment. You were favored and yet you didn't even know what was even going on. Mm, I'm yep. sitting here and I know the deepest things that was going on in my father's mind that you are cool to of and I don't even get the same love and respect. So we did get it wrong. The 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 baton belonged mm-hmm. to Blue Bolt. Yeah, I thought it was doctor. somebody else. So yeah. Okay. So okay. Sky Fox somehow acquired it, and it, and Hutch ended up acquiring it because Scotch because Sky Fox is the father of Hutch, and Hutch is Hutch. I loved Hutch. Hutch was my see, dude. and and Hutch is 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 crucial to me because mm-hmm. if the apple doesn't fall far if the apple doesn't fall far from the tree then we can assume that whatever the reason why Fox was, was banished might've been, you know, a gray area of him being a bad guy because his son is kind of a gray area in his character. He's yeah. running with like an underground but, group of criminals, but he's not really any he place. Like, yeah, I'm right. not the strong guy. I'm the weak guy. Like when, when was the first villain he fought when he's like, you think you're tough, blah, blah, the, blah. They just blah. called him what the man, the big boss or whoever he was. Yeah. 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 And he that was power like, is dope, though, man. I like. I thought it was dope. too. It was. And, and when he dope. gave it to the security guard, <laughs> and the security guard or whoever he was, he thought he knew stuff. He was like, "It doesn't matter who's holding it. Whatever <laughs> I say goes." I thought that was a cool line, right? Yeah, there. it was. <laughs> Shark and you know, waters. I was like, like "Oh," because 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 the big bad was like that 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 villain. He was like, "You think you're tough? You right. think you're tough?" He's like, "No, I'm just here, do, living my life." You think you scared me? He was he was completely unflinched by everybody, everybody. and then it's, it's so funny when he, when, they, when he did the security they came to, to get him. Well, he didn't deliver on the drugs, the alien drugs. He was like, "So what the fuck y'all going to do? What what are y'all going to do to me?" <laughs> and then he said this. He said the big bad guy to his heart, and it went into his heart, and he brought it back to him. He says, yeah. "Now, if you were the powerful, if you were the most powerful person in the room, what would you say or do?" Mm. That dude was like, "Oh, oh." I, <laughs> I didn't expect that. Yeah. Yo, Hutch, I like Hutch. I like Hutch. He's like to his heart. Yeah, I like Hutch. But Utopian held that shit. He tried to do it on him and told you it was not working for yeah. Utopia. Utopian's kind I mean, of he was like, ass, he tried to get it right. He was like, yeah. this ain't going nowhere, guy. This is, <laughs> you don't understand who I am? I am <laughs> so, yeah. 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 So let's talk about, um, uh, his wife, uh, Grace. Grace, I love Grace, her. when we first meet her, she's a like spitfire. Yeah. She Man. writes, she yeah. writes the article about his corrupt ass daddy and he comes <laughs> in and uh, she stands her ground. But over time, she kind of loses a little bit of that vigor to me, because even when they were having sex, like in the middle of sex, this dude just got up and I don't know, he went to go, go save, save the world. Mars or whatever. Yeah, go to Mars. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man, I ain't a hey, Mars going to have to wait. You know what I'm saying? I got to <laughs> hold on for a little bit Mars longer. For a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, she she was. I, I like her. So, I what, like so what do we think? So, uh, Chuck, what do you what do you think about Grace? My biggest issue is they made Grace secondary to Utopian. Utopian, when she was truly holding everything together mm. from the very beginning. This Spitfire woman was in a room full of men in the mm. in the twenties, yeah, thirties, blowing yeah. up on everybody like you fucking fire me. I yeah, kick yeah. all your ass, blah 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 blah. <laughs> And she bounced. Yeah. And I was like, yo, I imagine her when she gets her powers. Her hairs don't white it out. And she mm-hmm. and she she's just badass. And I was like, why would she be so subservient to this dude? See, that's that was my problem. Time. I yeah, think it's time. time. Was it time? I think time, man. It's time. You end up falling in love with this dude that you thought was crazy. Yeah. You end up having kids. Um, just the, just l- having the responsibility of, of living up to the mantle of this, this ideal, you know, after a while, you're going, you're going to buy in, you know, it's it, time, time gets to us all eventually. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think that's that what sad, happened to her. I, I wanted to see some more of that spit and that fire, yeah. especially when she started to really, to think, like, dude, why are you mad at Brandon when he just saved both of our lives? Like, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. And now you're trying to double punish him by making him go to the morgue and things like that. And they had a conversation, but I, I wanted a I, little I, I bit more bite from her. Be, I want to see her be a mother cub. Like I wanted her when she when she peeped up on Chloe. That was she, funny. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> like like getting that work. What you out, right. here, you out here? You out here with Hit Hutch? I'm fine, mom. Yeah, I know. I know he's the son of y'all sworn enemy. Mm. Was that Nick though? When that, I thought that's when she was with Nick. Yeah, nah, she, she was, was the dude that could stop time. Yeah, she was with time. Nick. Uh, she she was wasn't with it with yeah, they don't know about they don't know uh, about him Hutch. being with Hutch. Yeah, with Hutch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's with Nick. So she turned into a little peeping time. She kind of flew up. It was like Yeah, she did she did mm. those Superman moves. Superman <laughs> from the movie, Man of Steel, <laughs> Peeping Tom as Superman. Y'all remember that was, y'all remember that that scene. I do. <laughs> but but no, no, honestly, I, I thought she was powerful and I wanted her to be the mama cub. Where she ran into Utopia, like you're not going to talk to my kids this way. You're not going to do my kids this way. It's I found it very interesting that she's this. She allowed this patriarchy to happen. Yeah, man. And she nursed him, and she and she and she sat there and was kind of enabling her husband. Mm. And I and I can I can't. That's not the woman we saw in the twenties or thirties. It wasn't, and it seemed like a drastic change. What, yeah. what, what What are your thoughts, Intel? Well, I'm I'm thinking because okay, I'm thinking from the standpoint of the writer. It's a white dude writing this character, mm-hmm. and he's trying to create a person with this this ideology that is is that's a Boy Scout you know ideology, like the Superman Clark Kent ideology. I'm not going to mm-hmm. kill. I'm not going to take over thing, and. You're talking about a woman who who worked for the press, who is bombarded by yeah. nothing but corruption and all this other stuff, and yeah. yet she's sitting here with a man that is living this ideal. I mean, I do I do believe Sheldon buys into that completely, and he is you know, the so Boy too. Scout. He's the Boy Scout superhero. So that she he she is with somebody that can that that is against everything that she's been trying to fight against. I mean, that's why she was yeah. the, the reporter. That, that's what gives that He's, steel resolve that she has. And now her man is the answer. And if you live with the answer, what you think is the answer for a hundred years or however, 80 plus yeah. years that they've been together, your guard's going to go down. You know, you're going to like, he's right in the end. You know, he was, he was batshit crazy and he was right about the Island. He was yeah, right about the ideals of the superhero thing. Yeah. So why why would she doubt it? That's you true. Know? The only time she wavered was watching her son's ex girlfriend right. die in front yeah. of her, holding up to her husband's principles. Like that she was tragic have to, to me. Die. Yeah, that right. She didn't tragic. have, to and die. I like that character. One thing I do, I do like the women characters in this series. I wish they would elaborate. I wish there was a woman writer for this comic book because it could elaborate on these women characters. I find them so interesting. Like how how they interact with Chloe, how they interact with each other. Like it was like Chloe's and that they were a family. Like this, there's a community. Yo, you didn't show up, right? Yeah. Oh, I love that. I thought that was a dope. I thought that was a dope scene when they were in the club and she called her out, and she was like, "Yo, yo, our friend died, and you over here doing this stuff, and you over here taking pictures." I felt that, and that's a family thing. Like that's something that only family does, right? Like family. Like you didn't show up to. You didn't show up to Uncle John's funeral. What the yeah. fuck is wrong with you? That's why I'm yeah. like, fuck Chloe. Mm-hmm. Fuck Chloe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's horrible. She's a terrible She's a horrible individual. She's a horrible human being. That's yeah. why I was like, Hutch, don't you fall for that. Oh, <laughs> Hutch, that is got, Hutch. Hutch is in, oh, Hutch dog. Is in. Hutch is Hutch in. Going nowhere. That's <laughs> first <laughs> night. Hutch- yeah, <laughs> he was in. If you saw the face, oh, they're both of their faces after they after they yeah, go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, was, she was mad. Where <laughs> when he was when he bounced on her, she was like, "You leaving me?" Like she, that's the first time we ever seen Chloe Chloe break on anybody. It was a Hutch. Yeah, Hutch got her. That's broken. just a little tip. He would have been back if she hadn't and showed and, up. And, yeah, and Hutch she, is I, in. I said, I said she could call with Nick a time. Nick in the dead messing around with Hutch. Hutch Yo, be like okay, so Nick of Times heart, Hutch, boom, he's dead. Hutch tried to flex right and tried to dip from uh Sheldon, right? Like he, he yeah, he rolled up on, and then he was like, Yo, I'm a dip. He's like, Idaho, and he yeah. left, and then like two seconds later, Sheldon so shows right to the light, and he shoots the eyeballs, yeah. <laughs> 
Yo, I loved that. That was a great, yeah, that was great. a yeah, great that flex. Was great. It was. That was a it great was. flex. Especially I was like, like I said, Damn. when he yelled the thing, because he tried to say something. And he was like, <laughs> like, I'm not, wow. I'm not these dudes. Like, <laughs> you, you must have, you like, must you got me confused. Me like right. <laughs> so, do you I'm not read the, the news? Right. Do you not, do you <laughs> not do internet searches? <laughs> oh my God. That was a great flex. Yeah. My name is the Utopia. You need to Google me, dog. Right. Do you not? You know, hashtag utopia. Like yeah, you, you are. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yo, yo, and and here's here's another thing. It's another like little under like under the cover flex on on Sheldon as well as Utopian. He's the only person that Brainwave can't read. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and let's talk about this. See, I loved his daughter. Yes. I thought his Reiku, daughter was Reiku, so dope. Reiku as Reiku, the assassin, she was, she was dope. She was, yeah, and she's she like, I want a million dollars, what an hour a day, or a day, day. or day. I said yeah. Hour. I thought yeah. that scene so was knew, so we knew dope. They had money. We know that they do have money. Right. They are all of them are wealthy. Yeah, they better be. Shoot. And what makes it bad is <laughs> she was like, "You're my dad, but you were never there. You were never there. Yeah. Me and my me well, and mom were in these streets." Yeah, I mean that's the common thing throughout. Like, if you're yeah. a superhero, if you're a superhero. But Sheldon was always there it... with his kids. Brainwave was in his kids. Petra and her father were always together, hmm. and it's like Brainwave was a bad father. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, both of them were built. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, just both of them. Just yeah. neglect. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah, the Samsons are bad. Neglect. They're bad. One was father, neglectful, right? and one was overbearing. It's definitely right. overbearing. Right. And right. I think that comes yeah. from their father. Where so it's almost kind of the same Walt, situation, yeah. For Walt, yeah. he was overbearing, and so the brother was like, "I'm hands off of my daughter." No, that's away. absolutely right. Of course, and Walt Sheldon, would be overbearing, and Sheldon was his father was hands off, so Sheldon felt to be overbearing. I, I have a question for the both of you. And they raised their over. children just how he raised them, opposite of what they so, were raised. Yep. So, so how did you feel about Sheldon being haunted by his father? Like, how did that? I loved it. I loved okay. it. Because he he neglected his father. His father allowed him. His father enabled him to be this this prima donna son to make all these bad decisions, and for the bad decision to be the death that led to his father's death. It was his bad decision that led to his father's death. So it should haunt him. Mm. Yeah. It should haunt him. And I felt I felt I felt, I felt overall Sky Fox was haunted by it too, because he was always in the the shadow of the dumb brother. And he's as smart as Walt, but he knew Walt wasn't getting any love because Walt wasn't the favorite son. And here it is. I'm an outsider in the family of these two sons that inherited in his empire, and I'm kind of savvy myself. Well, Walt was wealthy himself. Walt he was. came from a wealthy family. He was, but he was still in the shadow of these two guys that he admired yeah. as brothers. Yeah. Yeah. And when, I, when we first introduced to Walt, I thought he had a lot of swag. I like, he did. I liked him. I liked Walt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I like. Yeah, that. I mean the, the the whole egg thing I thought was 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 kind of fly. It was a good way to flex. Like yeah. every morning, there's like a hundred eggs laid out. That, man, like, all right, that's that's. A I flex. was like, that's what you ball. Like I never yeah. even heard of no shit like that. It's <laughs> never <laughs> different. I didn't even know never. eggs came in that many variation. Yo, eggs. yo, his butler was like, on the last day, he was like, I saved number forty four because I realized in my notes that that was the one that you were the most fond of. I was like, ah, Lee, it is a different level. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I felt, Is that I felt how they really guy. do it? <laughs> I found I found I found I found out these relationships really interesting. This is one superhero show that's a kind of like relationships. They don't lean into women characters as much, and I wish they would. Mm-hmm. Well, it's definitely for adults, man. It it's is. not it's not for kids. It's not for kids. At, at, at all. There's, it's there's for no teenagers, kitty tropes. It's for like it's for teenagers, not tweens, but teenagers like 15, 16. I think they can get a lot from that. I thought it would be a lot older too. Like, I mean, because we see some real Family, some real deep problems. Some really family yeah. problems. It it's like grown folks' trauma. problems. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not really. Does he like me? Kind of problems, mm-hmm. or right. I think he's cute. Right. It's, it's not that. It's like, how do I keep my family together? Problems. Yes. Right. Yes. You know? And it doesn't lean in on the superhero part too much. They just happen to be superheroes dealing with all this. Yeah. It's yeah. a broken families. It's it's a broken extended family. And we see a lot of it. it's patriarchy too, man. Yeah. It's a lot of yeah. patriarchy going on in here. That's an undercurrent thing. Yeah. Because we saw that and how patriarchy. it impacts. Yeah. 
and how it impacts, you know, not only your family, but kind of the world. Yeah. Like these are all problems yeah. that have come from Patriot. Like, like we think Hutch is out there trying to save his father initially. And he's like, nah, I'm not trying to save him. He abandoned me. Right. And how everybody's dealing with it and I'm how everybody has too. adopted a new family. Because Hutch, the criminals were like, they, they were his family. He said, yeah. I've known yeah. you since what? I was like 10 years old. You're yeah. my family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and their leaving. biggest concern was like, are you going to leave us? I mean, and that's yeah, how you know Hutch, Hutch, Hutch ends up being like a father figure in that sense. Like he's yeah. keeping the gang together. Yeah. Yeah, right. And you would never and even and when he breaks up he with Claw. Superpowered. Like he yeah. never flexed him being superpowered. He just had yeah. this, this gizmo that made him go from place to place. Yeah. We and even, even when he broke up with Chloe, something. the first people he talked to was like, was those guys. And he was mm-hmm. like, and they were like, what do you mean? You fucking Utopian's daughter? Like, what are you talking about? How are we going to work? Is she coming <laughs> after you? Yeah. I'm not about when to she was crossing the street. <laughs> Yo, and I felt, I felt that. Right. I felt like, that. That's Utopian's daughter. No, regardless of how they do, do it, regardless of their relationship, yeah. a man is going to always protect his daughter. <laughs> and if we do something around his daughter, he coming to look for us. <laughs> like, what are you doing, dog? <laughs> this is a guy that flew on one side of the world to Idaho in the blink of an eye <laughs> in the, the blink, blink of an, of an eye, eye and shot lasers out of his eye from what about 10,000 feet in the sky yeah <laughs> he yeah. is not one to fuck he, with he's not one to mess with he's not one to mess with especially some plain human criminals right now nah. yep. yeah. so, and then so, dude, dude had the audacity be like I'm not scared of your dead fool you should be, <laughs> should be. what's wrong with you should, I think I you think, have I think, no powers well, dummy you have a that. stick that's it we saw <laughs> When he tried to get the get the stick back from me. yeah man, and we keep coming back to that. Like, oh, oh, you different. You yeah. made different. <laughs> you should, like we you said, you better different. Google. You better you Google, Google me, Google me fam. Fam. That's <laughs> when he realized it. He thought Utopian and, and and Chloe were similar, and Utopian and Brandon were similar. Nah, this is next level, dog. This is next right. level. <laughs> um, cat, cat, cat. So, the, the uh, scene, the, what, oh, what are we thinking? Season two. What would we? No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Sinter. Yeah, no, go I just, ahead, I just had a quick one. So they spent a lot of time on uh, the captain ship on, on mm-hmm. the way there, and and they they dealt with they dealt with some things that they deal with race, um, regarding the other black dude mm-hmm. that used to work yeah. in the factory that caped up Fritz. with him and his dad, Fred, Fritz. and everything. I was like, he caped yeah, up Fritz. real quick. I was already kind of done with him when he caped up. I was like, boss man gonna take care of us, kind of thing. I was like, here we go with this shit. So then he has like a moment of kind of like redemption when he's back on the ship and the engine breaks down and I'm really smart because I can read these books, boss man. I need you to pay attention. And then he got like <laughs> sacks up and finally like stands up to some mm-hmm. ship dude and all of a sudden, mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess he's supposed to have some kind of redemption. Am I the only one that's just that that was a little exhausted? With that? I think I may be reading into I'm it. I'm exhausted too as black. I maybe I, I don't want to admit that. We keep that. talking about it. I mean, these tropes it's, keep coming up. I'm <laughs> tired of the up. trope of black people proving themselves to white people that they're white. Yeah. Uh, we're that was just people. exhausting. We're just people <laughs> that live just like y'all with racism. Yeah. It's just, it's just pigmentation. It's just pigmentation. That's yeah. it. It's, that's the only difference. That's it. And, <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then, of course, they made the brother fast. Of course, they made the brother fast. <laughs> he, he can't be the, the smart thinker. The, he's either going to be fast or he's going to be strong. He's going to be he, he, he built a lot of the things. Okay. He did right. build a lot of the things. He's an engineer. Yeah, because, because, in, because yeah, he's in, an engineer. Um, Cause in uh bad not bad boys but um he can heal um, too he's the healer uh the other uh, Amazon one um but the boys yeah, not the, the boys the, the other brothers still fast uh, A train A train and he's cocky A train is cocky like oh the black like, the black athlete is cocky I was, like, I was so angry about that here we go and I and here I wonder go. I wonder if these creators these comic book creators are doing this tongue in cheek. Yep. Let's let's put the black guy fast. That ain't tongue in cheek. That's what it is. I think A Train is more tongue in cheek than yeah. than this dude in this show. Yeah. I wonder if they if they're and they took his legs away from him. <laughs> like, like 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 are all these comic book creators from two thousands being tongue in cheek uh, about everything that's written in the forties and fifties? And they might have been. That might have been because that was that just, that was the was thing the, that but, they were trying but, to do with a lot of the. But they do it art. at our trauma. That's what makes me angry. Yeah. These writers, yeah. you can be tongue and treat, but you, but the the prices are trauma. But you know what? The vindication, the vindication is Hutch because mm-hmm. Hutch is not the trope. Yeah, he's. Not and I was trope. happy about. That. I was yes. happy with Hutch because he's not the trope. He's not. The trope. He doesn't have any superpowers. 
he's just a quick thinker and he has a tool that he knows how to use yes to 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 its best else. ability that came that from to me was dope else. yeah but but still i mean it came from his father his father built it or alleged i think that's what he said his father built him this and that's the only thing that he has of him but so why but, didn't he get powers then why didn't hutch get we, powers? yeah i don't i don't know yeah all he's got all he's got is a tool right now we say it out. hutch is the son of sky fox but could he be the son of blue bolt do I mean, I don't know. Now. I mean, he's got some tint in his skin, so somebody was hopping the fence. So. Yeah. I mean, we, we know we know brainwave was brainwave hopped the fence. We know that for a fact. Yeah, yeah, brainwave. yeah. Brainwave she was so fence. dope. She I was. hated to see her go. So, are we saying is she dead? Yes. Did he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he mind melded her. You did okay. the Spock thing I, to her or whatever. Well, y'all the one that told me until you see what the casket or something that ain't nobody did. Yeah, so, yeah. That's, that's the rule. That's not, that's the Hollywood rule. That is the Hollywood until rule. Until you see the body. Yeah. They, so still, you know, still, I was I just know. hoping. I was hoping she yeah. came back. I liked Raku. Yeah. All right. So, uh, real quickly, uh, we'll start with you, Stintel. What would you like to see in season two, if there is uh, a season two? Okay, so if there is a season two, it's, it's one character in particular, and it's because of my hate for Chloe, because I can't stand her. But but that's but it's not a necessarily a bad thing when I don't like a character. It's it's a good thing because the actress is definitely doing a very good job. Though, whoever the lady is that, mm-hmm. that plays Chloe, she's doing a phenomenal job. I either want one or two things to happen with with this character. I either want her to turn all the way bad and be an amazing, incredible villain because I love villains and I think she can make a good one. Or she has a complete redemption arc. So though that's the big expectation. Um, and the other one is is it's all about the kids for me. Um, is is uh Brandon uh the the kid's name, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um I, I want him to make a decision on what it is that he's going to do regarding the choices that he's already mm-hmm. made that his father doesn't agree with. Is he gonna go his father's path or is he going to go the path of of brainwave? Okay. So those are those are my those are my two big expectations in order for it to be good. And I hope we have a really good villain. And from the and from what we've seen in the end of this, it looks like we may have one in Brainwave. I don't I don't know um, based off of what we've seen. It, it looks to be that way. So get a good villain and then have the two kids, the legacy. I mean, it's Jupiter's legacy, right. and figure out what the legacy is going to do with with this with this mantra. For me. I want to see like the Civil War and the Samson family, like the brain brainwave Mm -hmm. versus uh, Utopian. And I want sides to be drawn on each one. Maybe Mm. Brandon goes with uh, a brainwave. Maybe Chloe ends up going with a Utopian. So then we've got Lady. Like, I just want to see, you know, and how and how all of the other superheroes fall in line. So I'd right. like to see a super uh, civil war. And I don't have a victor because I honestly think Brainwave has a lot of good points. And that's with the side of killing time. his, yeah, besides of killing yeah. his daughter, that's that's kind of unredeemable. Yeah. But <laughs> not as Ch- uh, Chuck, what about you? Uh, what would you like to see for season two? I, I like to see the family break apart. I, I don't want I just want I don't want to see two factions. I want to see like three or four. Mm-hmm. I want I want people not to pick sides. I want to see people walk away. I want to see the rise of villains. I want to see families partner with villains. Like where do these villains come from? How are these villains created? I want to it's see true. that. That's what I want to see. I want to see these families just do something different. Mm-hmm. Break the break the comic book tropes of two good sides battling each other for principles. I want to yeah. see people like fuck that. I'm done. I'm going to go partner with these people over here because they get it. Mm, interesting. All right. So, Benji's, it is time for us to rate this series. We have a binge worthy scale. Uh, we have uh, five ratings at the number five spot is a full binge out. That means you love this shit. It was just dope. And you can't wait to see the next season. Then our next uh, rating is a four. And that's a full meal. Now, while a full meal isn't quite a binge out, it's still something that is delectable, something that you enjoy and you want to come back for again. Then we have it at three. We have the uh, mini meal. A mini meal is, eh, you know, it filled you up, you know, you ate it. It was edible, but, you know, you weren't, you didn't, you're not in love with it. You're not going to get up at five o'clock in the morning and drive across town and get that meal. Or you're just going to, if it comes out, you'll just watch it. 
At number two, we've got a snack, right? A snack. It barely filled you up. It was just a little bit, you know. You were sitting around bored and you picked it up. And then at the number one spot, we've got our cringe worthy. And that means that's just <laughs> some old bullshit. And why did you recommend this for me? So <laughs> I'll go first with my review. Now uh then we'll let we'll hear from our co-host. For this, it was it was interesting for me. Um I thought it fell in line with a lot of the tropes that we had already talked about earlier about the dysfunctional superheroes. And I had really enjoyed the boys. I loved Invincible. With this one, to me, it didn't add anything new. It was just kind of like, it wasn't bad, but it didn't add anything new. It wasn't extraordinary to me. It didn't really stick out. Now, I am invested in it. I would like to see a season two, but it's not something that I am sitting on the edge of my seat. Like, when is this coming out? And for those reasons, I'm giving it a mini meal. I'm going to turn next to... Centel, what, what are your thoughts, sir? Uh, I think this this program was cursed by by premiering last. Um, mm-hmm. Had I not seen Invincible, had I not seen The Boys, if this was one of the first of this type of genre of anti-hero gray sliding gray scale of good and evil, if this was one of the first to come out, I probably would have given it like a full meal. It still had some problems to me to, to keep it from being binge worthy. But because it's come after like Invincible, which to me was a complete binge worthy knock out the park. Uh, and then something that was really fast paced, like Invincible, uh, gave you a lot of different characters. It was fun. It was a good romp. This is very slow. It's, it's very slow. It's, it's, it's slow. The production quality isn't that much higher than a CW show. Like mm-hmm. I said, they blew the budget within like the first uh, couple of, uh, first couple of episodes. Mm-hmm. And then it's just, it's just a really big narrative. Um, it's, it, to me, it feels like it's built for, for an adult. Um, it's just not like a lot of fun per se. It's but showtime. It's interesting. It's showtime. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's, 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 it's interesting not Cinemax, though. It's not HBO. It's showtime. I, I didn't hate it. I didn't end up like going to my phone to to be distracted during the slow scenes um and i'll even say i even went as far as to uh to check out the actual comic because i wanted to know a little bit more about it so it's it's that level of interesting but i cannot get past the fact that it's just slow so it's a mini meal for me as well i just just like uh just like johnny said uh i'm not pressed to see season two um but when it does come out i will absolutely finish it i will it's, it's I'm invested enough. So it's 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 a mini mill. All right. So, Chuck, what about you? Uh, I'm just going to say ditto to both of you all saying y'all said exactly what I was going to say. Uh, so I give it a mini meal. I mean, uh, there's thing there's aspects I do like. I do like the family trauma and I wish there was more action. It lacked action for me. There was not enough action sequences. Um, I wish you know, one fight because of what he did with what he did with Black Star was enough to harp on for nine episodes. <laughs> I'd rather see Brandon make other mistakes as well. But in in, mm-hmm. in in lieu of trying to keep the family together, like now they're going against the villain type that is out to kill them. They're not going against humans. They're not fighting national disasters. There are actual hardcore villains that are powerful that have figured out that utopian is the strongest thing on the, in the world and we have to defeat him. And once we can figure out to defeat him, we definitely can defeat everybody else. Um, they spent a lot of time in the past, in their history. And I didn't need all that. I thought so too. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't need, I didn't need the Indiana Jones adventure. And they gave it was just too long. And it was to just me. It was mad just like, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think <laughs> yeah, I think really. it might be right, guys. They, they had a hundred million dollars for all the episodes, and they spent a lot of that in costuming and getting the past right. Like those costumes in the past were spot on. The yeah. car, uh, the virtual production there was spot on. I just think there's, there's work to be done, and I want to delve in the lives of these characters. I want to feel more like Roseanne with superpowers. <laughs> 
<laughs> on that <laughs> note, because I've never heard that one in my life. Roselle was a lot set of up problems. With superpowers. A lot so of power. We lot can't of get much better than that. All right. So we got all three of us. We rated it as a three for a mini meal. So this is officially going to be a mini meal. <laughs> okay. All right, fellas, as always, it was a pleasure speaking to you all. Uh, can't wait to get our sister mm-hmm. back next week. She will be back yes. next week. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So uh, for our Benjis, uh, this concludes our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, we've got to give a shout out to Digital Click for all of their creative that they provide, all this creative that you guys see. This is done by Digital Click. Please follow us here on Twitch. And if you guys love what we're doing, please please consider subscribing to our channel. If you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your account. Now, this won't cost you anything, but it absolutely means the world to us. Uh, Gentlemen, do you have anything to say uh, before we sign out? Uh, yeah, I apologize for sneezing because I'm allergic to the same old Hollywood tropes. So once we figure out the next, <laughs> Actually, uh, I got you. <laughs> once we figure out the next binge worthy that it doesn't linger on that, I'll be doing a lot better for the rest of y'all. <laughs> what about you, boss man? You got anything else to say to the people uh, before we head night, out? Good night, God bless. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for coming out. Good night, God bless. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace. So.